Thank you so much for being here. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself and telling me a little bit about yourself? Well, hi, Annabelle. Hi. First of all, thank you all for having me. I'm Valerie. Um, I live here in New Milford, Connecticut, married, been married for 22 years. Don't quote me on that. Two children. Um, right now I'm working as an author, a writer, newly published memoir, Shattered to the Core. And I'm also a personal trainer. I sub classes at uh, two of the local gyms here in New Milford, Connecticut. Wow, that's awesome. Could you tell us a little bit more about your core fitness method and what inspired you to get into that? So it's funny, when I first moved to Connecticut, I moved from Syracuse, New York in a fairly like suburban area, I would say a lot more city than you know Connecticut. And I was in my early 20s, I moved up by um, like in the Mariel mm -hmm. uh, area of Connecticut. And I didn't really know the area. So I would go out running or walking and try to get to know the area a little bit more. So I started running. And then uh, very shortly after that, the club, it used to be called the club. Now it's called New Milford Fitness and Aquatics. Mm -hmm. But it was originally called the club on, Gro on Grove Street. They opened up and I came on there as a trainer. And then my passion for running evolved into a running club. So I started coaching your average, you know, weekend warrior, somebody who just wanted to run your 5K up to a marathon. I used to, you know, coach people to run uh, all different distances. So that evolved into what's known today as the core fitness method. So it's more than just running. We train for cycling. We strength train. So it's kind of all encompassing. Wow, that's so cool. It combines so many different things. Yeah. Um, obviously, you are a newly published author. Could you tell us more about your book? So my memoir uh, came to be in 2013, my mother died by suicide. And then shortly after that, I went through a, um, a medical illness. I actually had precancerous uh, uh, breast cancer cells in my, in my breast tissue. So I made the, the, the uh, decision to have a bilateral mastectomy. And it was just like when things happen, sometimes they happen all at once. It was that kind of time period in my life. So what I did was I just started journaling. I had no idea I was going to write a book. I started journaling and like, you know, writing down everything I was feeling and the process of that actual surgery. And then when COVID hit and then everybody was home and we weren't really working as much, I pieced it together into a manuscript. And um, so I would say like right around the beginning of 2020 is when I finally decided like I have something here and I'm going to, you know, and then, and then I pieced it into what I call a patchwork quilt of what was my manuscript and then started um, querying agencies. Wow, that's amazing. What does this book mean to you and what do you hope the impact will be on other people? Well, when I, um, what, what it meant to me in the beginning has definitely evolved. In the beginning, I thought if I just leave a legacy for my kids and my husband to read, then, you know, it would be like a little bit of a roadmap to see like, okay, my mom went through this and she made these choices. You know, now I have a different direction to go in, you know, and so I thought, okay, that's, that's, that's as much as I need right there. And then when it got published, the, the amount that people are sharing with me that they're like, I might not have gone exactly through what you went through, mm -hmm. but the emotions that are tied with the stress and the trauma that you've gone through, people can relate to. And not just women, you know, just like men and women and kids and like kids your age, like that are relating to going through something traumatic in their life. And, you know, it triggering anxiety or maybe a situational depression, you know, that has just meant the world to me that people can read this and actually not feel so alone or so ashamed of the way they may be feeling. Yeah, that connection must be just amazing to have with other people. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit um, about some women um, in your life or in history who have inspired you through this journey? Um, you know, truth tellers. I might not be able to, you know, actually say their names because um, when I was coming into this interview, I, I know you, you had asked me before, you kind of prompted me to think of an influential person in my life. And I can just say anybody that lives their authentic truth and comes from a pa place of truth, that's who inspires me. I like to surround myself with people that do that. And I think that I've done a good job with that so far in my life, more so later on. But um, I will say I do... I do have one person that um, I do want to mention, and that is my mother, because she was the big inspiration for this book. And there was something inside of me that just knew that 
you know, that she would be okay with me telling her truth, even though she's not here today to tell it, mm -hmm. that, that I had her blessing. Yeah, for sure. That's so sweet. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give um, to other young women out there who may want to write a book or um, get into the fitness world? What's a message that you would send to them? Well, get, first of all, getting into the fitness world um, is so not dynamic now. For me, although I'm not, I'm not working so much in that field anymore, um, education. I mean, you have to have eat the credentials to back up your passion. Mm -hmm. It is um, a great industry to get into. It's something that I will always, you know, have my foot in, you know, uh, so to speak. As far as writing, you know, people have asked me, like, well, how did that, you know, even come about? I think there's a writer in everybody. Where to start? Just start journaling every single day. Like anything that you want to be good at in life, you have to practice. You have mm -hmm. to practice diligence daily. So, you know, for those that are trying to write and they might be able to, you know, experiencing a little writer's block, forget about the subject you're trying to write about. Just write something like practice writing every single day. I gave myself an hour. Like I was like, OK, you have to commit an hour each day, just like you do to exercise to this new, you know, thing that you want to get into. And it paid off. Oh, yeah, that's good advice to give. Yeah. Do you feel like you face any obstacles um, in either either direction um, that you feel like? As a woman, you had to deal with specifically that maybe your male counterparts did not have to deal with? Well, when I first started training, and it's very hard to get a job as a personal trainer. We're talking over 20, this is probably 25 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was newly married. So see, 22, 23 years, Brian. I was newly married. I remember when I got hired full time, I got hired to be the personal training manager. And God bless my mother-in-law. It was just a sign of the times. There's nothing to do with her as a person. I'll never forget one of the first questions she asked me. Well, who's going to make dinner? Like, that's the sign of the times. Like, literally, you know, this was the late 90s. Her response to me when I went to go work full time after I had my daughter was, who's going to be home to make dinner? You know, we wouldn't even think to ask that now. And she's evolved. I've evolved. And, you know, because I did pause. I'm like, oh, yeah. Who's going to be home to make dinner? Well, you know what, Brian, you're going to be home to make dinner. And that's probably something that, you know, my male counterparts at the time, they never were, you know, proposed that question. So we've come a long way. There would be no way that somebody would even think to ask that now. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's, that's yeah. Kind of Isn't that funny? You know, like who's going to make dinner? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, you for know, sure. So. For sure. Do you feel like you've seen in general, the industries have come a long way? In absolutely. You know, absolutely. Everyone has such you know, a dynamic schedule now. And even with the pandemic and COVID, things, workplaces have changed. You know, I don't think that we're going to regress back to where we were in the late 90s, early 2000s yeah. when I first started in the workforce. I mean, we have, we've come, we've come, you know, very far strides in that. And it's, um, it's amazing to see, but it is funny, the emotion that's attached to different things. Like we, I talked about what my male counterparts you didn't have to deal with with my fitness career. But when I came into writing, a lot of what we did, um, I worked with a hybrid self-publishing company. Mm -hmm. So the um, the gentleman that owns the company, his name is Gary. And there, I remember there were four of us on this Zoom meeting. He was the only male. And we were tossing around titles of the book. This wasn't the original title. That's another thing that happens with books a lot of times. You'll think that you're going to have one title and they're mm -hmm. like, don't get married to it. So... I wanted the name core. I'm like, that's the name of my peeps, my core peeps. And what I was feeling in the, it during that time, that really, you know, terrible time in my life was this angst in my core. And one of the ladies shouted out, oh, what about shattered, like shattered? And he paused. He's like, mm, I don't like it. It's too harsh. It's too negative. And I, I paused for a minute. Like I couldn't find my voice. And I'm like, you know what, Valerie, find your voice, speak your truth. I'm like, it is it isn't negative. What I went through was harsh. I was shattered. And what I went through doesn't mean that it's a negative thing. It was just the truth. I was completely shattered. And that's the word we're going to use, you know, like, and I stood in that truth and he was like, okay, but it was interesting to see that dynamic of thought between what, you know, the gentleman thought on this meeting versus the, all the women in the yeah. meeting, if that makes any sense. It does. Yeah. Well, I'm, Good for you for speaking up yeah. and, and having that voice. Mm -hmm. um, the last question I have on here is, what does Women's History Month mean to you? 
you know, it's um, just a time to take a, take some time, like to look at the people that have influenced our lives. And, you know, um, when I was coming in here today, I thought, who can you think of, Valerie? Well, fitness related was this lady in the late 80s. I think I was a freshman in high school. So like you guys reminded me to think of the women in history that actually influenced me. And I thought, who can I think back to? I'm like, actually, there was this sprinter. Her name was Flo jo. And forgive me if I don't have her name correct, but I, I know her first name was Florence. I know for a fact, because this is what really just blew me away, is she still holds the record for the 100 meter dash. And I think at the time when she did it in the 1988 Olympics, she even beat like men's records. But what was really cool about her was she not only just smashed records in her sport, but she also owned her style. She used to wear these really extravagant outfits. And I remember like being a teenager and thinking like, this woman is so cool. Like she's just crazy, you know, um, you know, athletic, but she also knows who she is to like mm -hmm. come out to the world on, you know, cameras all over the, you know, all, all over the world and wear these awesome outfits as a sprinter. Like it was just phenomenal. I remember she really um, made an impact on me. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have, but thank you so much You're for being here. Me. And to anyone watching this, please check out Shattered to the Core. You can get it on Amazon and on Valerie's website. Yeah. Thank you.